So hi guys, uh, I'm Mike from uh, Optimize Gastro and I'm going to go through uh, uh, an example of a clinical scenario and talk about the, the points that you cannot miss uh, as well as the five star points that will be really crucial to you getting your scores up from threes and fours to the five out of five and the maximum marks you can get. Um, so the scenario we're going to talk about is a patient who's admitted with hematemesis uh, with a background history of cirrhosis. Um, now, the first points we're going to talk about are the cannot miss points. And I think the majority of you, certainly in the practice and previous interviews we've done, would would, uh, would get this. But the most crucial thing is you have to uh, explain that this is a, a potentially variceal bleed until proven otherwise. And you should know how you're going to address that and how you're manage, going to manage that with a combination of um, fluids, product transfusion as required, um, correction of coagulopathy, but also terlipressin to reduce platinum, to reduce portal pressures uh, and IV antibiotics. Um, you And you need to get that in early and you need to be very clear and precise about it. The other thing you need to be clear about is, and another cannot miss point, is that you need to recognise and state that this is a medical emergency. And if they are unwell with ongoing bleeding and unstable, then you need to put out a major hemorrhage protocol. You need to state that explicitly and you need to know what that involves. And it's worth just having a look at the local policy at your trust uh, to take five minutes just to reassure yourself about it. And then one of the other points, it becomes a bit of a uh, almost name dropping exercise, but you need to explain that you uh, uh, and demonstrate that you're aware of the British Society of Gastroenterology's upper GI bleed bundle or the uh, European Society of Gastroenterological Endoscopy uh, and their uh, guidelines about variceal bleeding and how you and things that you would want to put in place uh, immediately to try and ensure a good outcome for those patients. So those are the kind of really key uh, cannot miss patient, uh, points for a variceal bleed scenario. Uh, and then more now we're going to talk about the five star points so uh, and these are the ones as i said are trying to get you up from threes and fours out of five to really getting the maximum marks um things that you that often a lot of the five star points are actually things that you would do in real life um, and that you just need to show that and, and use those points to demonstrate that you have experience uh, managing this in real life and that is things like ensuring they've got good intravenous access uh, it sounds silly as a five star point but the number of people that won't say that in a in a scenario and how important it is in real life is very is very key uh, the second thing is that we all know that variceal bleeds can be a uh, indicative of decompensation but can also be a cause of decompensation so you need to state that when you're assessing the patient as well as stabilizing them you would also want to look for other other um, features of decompensation as well as causes so that is things like features wise you're looking for jaundice encephalopathy ascites um, and uh, and we've already talked about bleeding um, and then for causes you want to think about infections so full septic screening with blood tests including an acidic tap uh, new medications uh, and uh, and the other kind of common causes that you can find on the BSG uh, decompensated cirrhosis bundle, which is another key thing that you should mention during your um, discussions. Um, a further thing is that hematemesis uh, is a relative uh, indication for uh, intubation and ventilation. Variceal patients, when they're bleeding from uh, cirrhotic patients, when they're bleeding from variceal bleeds, tend to have a lot of blood within their stomach and upper um, GI tract, and therefore they're very high risk of, of aspiration, which is can be fatal for these cirrhotic patients. Therefore, you need to get anaesthetics and intensive care on board early, and make sure that there is sufficient airway protection when for the procedure. Uh, you another point you want to be uh, talking about in order to get to the uh, to get to the top marks is about court is communication uh, which is a separate mark in the clinical scenario um, and you can do that by saying that you would discuss with the uh, nurse in charges in endoscopy as well as the consultant uh, bleed consultant on call or whoever it may be at your hospital at that time uh, and another point that you can add to that and build on that is use your own experience certainly in my hospital we get a lot of variceal bleed patients who are in, in who are in ed and there's uh, conflicts between ed and endoscopy about where the patient's going to go after the procedure um, and uh, because ed are reticent to accept them back to their department and therefore often requires higher level communications with either the nurse in charge in ED or the consultant in ED um, as well as the uh, critical care teams to work out exactly what's going on and you can talk you can state that you have been sure that that happens and it's a really it does it's a really good point to show a your communication skills but b also your real life experience in managing these patients one
one further thing that I would always say with a receipt with a station that involves an endoscopy is that you should be aware of the risks of those endoscopies uh, and, and what and if you were to explain to a patient how you would how you describe it and what the risks are. All right, so that's just a quick run through of um, some cannot miss points, but also five star points that will hopefully get you up to the kind of maximum marks that we're all hoping for. Um, there's lots of stuff out there and it can be a bit daunting when you're first going through because it's just feeling like there's too much information to um, to go through. So I've kind of picked the ones I think are most commonly useful, which ones will give you the most benefit for them. Now, the first one is very, very, is a brief document, but it's very well known to everyone. And it's the BSG decompensated cirrhosis bundle. Now, it may feel a bit SHO using this, but actually this does very succinctly and very deep and very in very much detail go through exactly how you manage all of the elements of decompensation. And knowing it like the back of your hand is a key, key element in order for you to get good um, basic marks on any uh, station that may or may not involve decomposition of the of the liver so it's really 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 important that you know this like the back of your hand um other resource uh, another useful resource that i've found particularly helpful in recent years is the esge website so it's the european society of gastroenterological endoscopy and they have lots and lots of uh, really good detailed guidelines on there and um, you can read them as much as you want but uh, and go through the whole thing if you want to but that may be quite daunting but there is also very nice succinct key points that are in there and they address things like like bleeding either variceal or non-variceal and um, which are common uh, features and scenarios for these um for these uh, stations uh, and often do uh, cause people a bit of concern but actually if you follow these guidelines and you, you're in very good stead for it and know them well uh, a further resource I would suggest using is the BSG um, guideline section on their website because again it has guidance on things like inflammatory bowel disease and other common subjects but a, a wide array of things and just have a look through there and just and anything you feel like you're not uh, comfortable with or don't or feel your your knowledge is lacking then have a look through those guidelines again some of these you know they're big documents some of these the be it the IBD guideline is something close to 200 pages so you don't need to read through all of it to prepare yourself really in depth for that but what I would suggest is that you again read the key points so that you understand all of the kind of key basic stuff that are, that's in that guidance and what you need to know and um, people often get another resource that I would suggest using is the endoscopy campus website It's free and it has lots and lots of images about um, of, of previous procedures that whether it's polyps, varices, ulcers, whatever. So you can just be able to recognize pathology and you don't need to spend too long going through it, but just have an idea of what they are so that if, if they show you any slides or anything like that during your interview, then you can then you'll be able to answer it properly. There's also a nice section on there about the equipment. So if you haven't had much exposure from uh, to uh, endoscopy then you can try and um, then you can try and go through that and read up so you understand the, the kind of basics of it uh, and then the last one I mentioned is actually in your everyone's hospital and is the endoscopy department and it sounds a bit strange but virtually every endoscopy department will have a, a section where there is loads of uh, information booklets that are designed for, for patients they're not long they're one or two pages each and I would read them and I would get them to read them about things like gastroenterology uh, sorry like gastroscopy like colonoscopy so you understand the prep that's needed before it and can answer questions about what happens for antiplatelet medications and other BSG um, guidance but also about things like what do they do with their diabetic medication how long do they need to be fasted for for colonoscopy when do they take their bowel prep and all of these things come up very commonly as, as added questions uh, and are a good opportunity to, for you to demonstrate your kind of rounded knowledge about all of this there's also information on there on programs like the um, bowel cancer screening program and, and certainly at my hospital there is a good booklet that explains the whole thing and has very useful information and uh, and it's a very good idea to just spend a little bit of time reading these so that you have the kind of really kind of good grounding and all the basic information of course there's other resources available but those are some of the most important i think uh, if you have good knowledge of those then you'll be in very good stead for any of your uh, anything that comes up in your interviews uh, i hope that's helpful good luck